afternoon. It depends on where you're based. I'm currently Europe-based, so for me, it's early in the morning. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes, I hope you, are you can. Perfect. So let me ask with, let me start with a question. Who of you believes that digital technologies will tremendously change the way we develop our processes and we manufacture drugs? Hands up. Huh. Not seeing too many hands, but I believe this is due to the techniques that we're using. So what I want to show you today is how smart hybrid modeling solutions can enable the creation of digital bioprocess twins. My name is Moritz von Stosch. I'm working at DataHow, and DataHow is a Swiss-based company, and we provide data analytics and in particular hybrid modeling solutions for creating digital bioprocess twins. Now, what is current best practice when it comes to process development? Typically, we use a quality by design approach. And what that means is that we start with the product here on the left, and we identify for that product what are the critical quality attributes. The next step is that we look at our process parameters and we evaluate whether changes in these process parameters will have an impact on the critical quality attributes or not. If they do have an impact, or we assume they have an impact, then we want to do a statistical design of experiments to study variations in this process parameters and evaluate how they impact on the critical quality attributes. That means we have to do a large number of experiments to experimentally see the evidence. And then once we have done the experiments, we can do some multivariate response data modeling. And therefore we can really understand how these process parameters impact on our process. Now, once this is done, we typically report this in some kind of um, documents and reports, and we also store the data. Next time we have a new project with a new monoclonal antibody, for instance, or it could also be a recombinant protein vaccine or you name it, there's very little knowledge that we take over. In fact, only for some of the process parameters, we can somehow assume that they might or might not have an impact. And what that means is that for every new drug candidate that we have, for every new project that we have, we need to roughly do the same amount of experiments that we did before. So there's very little knowledge carryover. And in fact, it means that we have to develop the process quasi de novo for every new drug candidate. Up. Now, how can we do this better? Now, if we want to do increasingly more with less experiments, we essentially have to reduce the number of experiments. So that means for every new drug candidate, ultimately we would want to do less experiments and we can only do that, in fact, if we do transfer knowledge from one project to the next, from one product to the next. So we need to iteratively learn. How can we achieve this? Now at Data How, we believe that hybrid modeling is the key to transfer knowledge. Let me give you a conceptually very easy example of hybrid modeling, and it directly applies to bioprocess development or in fact process development in general. Here we have a rabbit and a turtle, and we send them through a box, and we take the time that they require to get through the box. And you can see that the turtle, of course, requires longer than the rabbit. We would do the same similar experiments in bioprocess development on small scale, right? And the next step we would do is we would scale up the reactor and here we scale up the box and then we send the rabbit and the turtles through the box again. And what we see now is that the rabbit takes more time than the turtle. We don't really understand why um, and we have to scale up anyways to a, to a larger scale. And if we would now, based on our experimental data that we have gathered at these two scales, conclude which animal is faster through the bigger box, we cannot conclude really anything because we don't know. So there is no data-centric conclusion that we can draw from the experiments that we have done at smaller scale. If we now, however, add knowledge, and here we add the knowledge about the route that both the rabbit and the turtle are taking through the box, then with the added knowledge, we can generate more insight. Namely, we can compute average velocities. And if we have the average velocities and we have the route through the bigger box, then of course we have a very solid estimate of how long the rabbit and how long the turtle take through the box. And this is really why knowledge centric conclusions and adding knowledge can help us to understand the system much better. And this can be one on one transferred to bioprocess development. This kind of approach where we add knowledge 
to our data and we combine two modeling approaches is what we refer to as hybrid modeling. At DataHow, we believe that hybrid models are the key to digital twins in bioprocess development. And in fact, we believe that hybrid models will change the way we develop processes, not only now, but also in the future. Hybrid models can increase our process understanding. They typically reduce the number of data that we require, and therefore they reduce the number of experiments and the experimental effort. And they help us to excel in extrapolation. This is really to go beyond what we have already experimentally investigated and suggest new optimal conditions that might be outside of what we have investigated so far. Ultimately, they will also help us to transfer knowledge from one product to the next, from one scale to the next, and therefore they help to reduce costs, to keep risks in check, and they will help us to increase model robustness. Now, model robustness is per se not interesting, but if we can use increased model robustness to self-learn and to increase process robustness and to accelerate development, then of course, it's a very interesting feature because essentially that means we can do less experiments all the time and we can take smarter decisions. Let me show you on a concrete example how this would be done. Now here we are looking at a mammalian bioprocess example and it's, it's really very easy equations. Let me run through it and you will see how easy it is. Here, for instance, we look at the change of glucose, the change being indicated by D, of the change of time. And glucose concentration in the reactor changes over time when we have a change in the consumption of every cell of glucose. Now here, this is the cell-specific glucose consumption. And because we have a lot of cells in the reactor, we of course need to multiply with the overall number of cells. We can similarly do the same balances, and this is really material balances, what we know from our fundamental engineering knowledge. We can do the same balances for all the other cons uh, substances that we have in the reactor, such as lactate, glutamine, ammonia, viable cells, and of course, titer, what is what we are mostly interested in. What we, however, don't understand in these balances is these specific rates. How is glucose consumed? How is lactate produced? And with data-driven functions, with machine learning tools. And here we use the advanced neural network. We could also use Gaussian process models and so forth. Now, what do we do in this case? Essentially, we train the data-driven model with all the process data that we have. That is changes in process parameters, changes in feed conditions and so forth. And by training it with all the data, we can then understand how do changes in the process parameters impact on changes in our specific consumption rates. And that really means we combine a robust deterministic backbone with a flexible machine learning component that allows us to exploit all the data of the process that we have. Now, if we then look at the advantages that such a hybrid model offers us, essentially starting at day zero, we can predict for every moment of time how tight it will be. We can predict for every moment of time how the process will have evolved. Here, for instance, for day four or for day 10, which are typically days where we compare tighter evolution in the experiments, we can directly make a prediction of how the tighter will be at that very day. We have also the capability to make much more accurate forecasting. Here, we compare our hybrid model to a proprietary PLS model. And you can see that even so, it is a proprietary technology that we have developed, which already outperforms standard tools. The hybrid model outperforms by far the proprietary PLS technology. So hybrid models are much more accurate when it comes to forecasting to predicting. We can also see that if we extrapolate to higher biomass concentrations, you can see here in black dots the experimental points over different uh, numbers of days. And this is the viable cell density. You can see how the hybrid model here shown in the continuous black line is much more accurate in predicting the real evolution of the viable cell density than the other two methods. Particularly interesting it is when it comes to glucose, glutamine, or other feeding concentrations. Here, because of the knowledge entry that we have in this material balances, meaning we explicitly account for the feeding, we can really predict the seesaw profiles, the 
the profiles that we have in reality with the hybrid model, whereas with the other two modeling technologies, it is not possible to describe the same profile. So That's here, important. hybrid models really provide a huge advantage. What Dr. does that mean? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Moritz. Yes. I just request you to uh, be a little brief because we are already running out of time. I'm, I'm almost finished. So what does that mean? Essentially, it means we're no longer taking the same number of experiments for every new drug candidate, but we can reduce the number of experiments if we just use this technology. If we now combine it with a self-learning method, then every single time we develop a process, we can reduce the number of experiments further. And that means we really create a digital twin platform that allows us to accelerate bioprocess development. Let me conclude by saying that we have three products. One is Data Hell Lab, which is the hybrid modeling engine. One is SpectraHound, where we develop very quickly calibration models for Raman, MIT-IR, or other spectro spectroscopic techniques. And we have Data Hell Twins, where we combine all these technologies in a complete digital representation of your process. This being said, I just want to highlight that we have more than 35 years in up and downstream bioprocess research experience and more than 25 years of data analysis knowledge we have most of the or 10 of the biggest pharmaceutical companies are already our customers and we have several technology partners and if you're interested to learn more please get in touch i would be glad to present you some of our projects in more detail thank you